If you've been searching for your first bandsaw, then you've probably come across this one from Titan. Available for just £159.99, the price is certainly very appealing. Join me as I deep dive into all of its features, from unboxing to testing, to finally address the question, is this bandsaw worth the money? And if you're brand new to the channel or woodworking in general, then welcome. I'm Jack and I upload weekly woodworking and DIY videos, as well as the latest tool reviews. And if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then go ahead and click the subscribe button. Let's get into it. Now included in the box of this bandsaw, you're going to get everything you need for the actual main base of it, including a very sturdy table, but you're also going to get a few accessories, which is nice for a bandsaw at this price range. These accessories include a push stick, a mitre gauge, and a fence. Now, if I'm honest, these don't feel like the highest quality accessories, but the fact that they're included is a great touch. And we'll be testing out all of these accessories later on in the video. All in all, the setup of this bandsaw was straightforward and it took me about half an hour in total. And I didn't find it particularly difficult. And I do think if you're a beginner and this is your first bandsaw, then you're not gonna have any issues actually getting this set up. When it comes to calibration, this did take a little bit longer. There are a few things that you're going to want to check because this saw doesn't come assembled. It doesn't come calibrated out of the factory. The most important things that you're going to want to check after setting this up is making sure that the blade is at a right angle to the table, making sure the tracking of your top wheel has been set correctly, and making sure the blade guide supports are close but not touching the blade. And if you want me to do a separate calibration video for this bandsaw, then please let me know in the comments below. In terms of build quality, I would say that for the price, this is so far very impressive. Everything is made out of nice hard metal. I think most of it is cast aluminium. It does have a nice sturdy weight to it. And this isn't bolted down, but it doesn't actually feel like it's going to go anywhere if I was to give it a good nudge. It's not all metal though. Some interesting decisions have been made on things like this, the blade guard, which is actually mostly made out of plastic. The fact that the table has a slot for the included mitre gauge is a really nice touch. And I'm looking forward to testing that out later on. And then here is the fence that is included. So just go ahead and hook it over the back and then you can lock it in by pushing down this handle. A lot of the reviews that I've seen online do complain about this fence and say that it wobbles around, but that is not the experience that I'm having with it. It seems to be very well in place now that I've locked it in. There is a little bit of flex in the fence, but that is because it is hollow aluminium but the actual fence itself isn't moving on this table. I'm applying quite a lot of pressure here, and the only thing that's actually wobbling is the stand that it's on, not the fence itself. Now, there are a bunch of knobs on the back of this bandsaw that you're going to want to get your head around. The one at the top here allows you to tension the blade, and in my experience, you are going to have to have that set to the maximum so your blade is properly tensioned. The next one we've got is this handle here, which allows you to quickly take the tension off of the blade if you need to change it. This one here allows you to adjust the blade tracking. These two at the side here allow you to change the blade guard itself, and this should always be set to the lowest depth possible for the timber that you're cutting. So if you're cutting a piece of timber that is only 15 mil, you wanna make sure that this is set to something like 16, 17 mil. And then down here, you have a rack and pinion system, which allows you to tilt the angle of the table. In terms of build quality, this saw is certainly very impressive, but the real test comes when we start making cuts. So let's see how this bandsaw does against some common timber type. Okay, so first up, I'm testing this thin piece of pallet wood. This is only about 15 mil. So let's see how this does. Okay, so as expected, it handled the pallet wood very easily and it's left actually really nice cut. And to me, that looks like a very even edge. Next up, I've got this 45 mil or one and a half inches timber. So let's see how it does with this. And again, it got through that with no issues at all. And for the final test, I'm going to be cutting this. This is 75 mil hardwood. I don't know the exact wood that it is, but it's not soft wood like the pine that I was just cutting, so let's see how it handles this. And you can see that that handled it absolutely lovely. That to me looks like a very good cut. It's definitely even from top to bottom. The maximum capacity of this saw is 80 millimeters and this measures 75. So this is pretty much it set to its maximum capacity. But generally speaking, you're not gonna be cutting anything much harder than something like this. So, you know, very impressed so far. Now, there are a lot of people online that have been complaining about the fence on this bandsaw. So what I'm gonna do is set up the fence and hopefully get a nice straight cut through this piece of hardwood. So let's see how that performs. It should go without saying, but you do wanna make sure that when you set up your fence that you are using a set square just to make sure that it is going in nice and square. I'm now gonna push this through and see how much of a straight cut I get. I didn't need to finish that cut to tell you that there is quite a lot of blade drift going on there. Now I suspect the thickness of the blade 
and the quality of the blade have a lot to do with this, but certainly trying to get a straight cut there was very, very difficult. Now, this isn't the sort of cut I would typically recommend that you do on a bandsaw. This is something that I would usually save for my table saw. Let's try it with a slightly thinner piece of wood to see how that performs. Same again, I'm still getting quite a lot of blade drift between the start of the cut and the end. I actually think that the reason for this is the blade and not the fence. The fence isn't the reason that this is moving, it is the blade actually pushing it out. As for the miter gauge, you can see this is a fairly cheap miter gauge. It doesn't have any grooves that control the actual degree that you've got it set to. So you are relying on a manual set square in order to make sure that you've got it set to that perfect zero and hopefully that is right. So I do encourage people to actually check that every time. And what I've really enjoyed doing is combining this miter gauge alongside the fence to cut repetitive cuts with small pieces of timber. If you're finding this video useful, then please go ahead and smash the like button. It really helps the YouTube algorithm spread it to more people and I would really appreciate it. So to summarize the testing of the cutting performance, overall, I would say that this saw does cut very well and it certainly got through the thickest piece of timber I have, which is this 75 millimeter hardwood. When you're cutting out like a curvy line, this does a really good job. However, if you're planning on cutting a straight line, then the factory blade isn't gonna be the right one for you. And you are going to need to consider upgrading to a thicker blade to prevent that drift that I was seeing. Now this saw does have a built-in 50 millimeter extraction chute which if you do have the adapter for it I would encourage you to use. However if you do not have the adapter like me then what you can do is unscrew the bottom of the bandsaw itself, open this up and make sure occasionally just to hoover out all of the sawdust that will be collecting down here. That is going to make sure that your saw is properly maintained and that you get no jamming in the long run. As always, I like to end all of my reviews just summarizing what I really like about the tool and areas that I feel like could be improved upon. So to start off with the pros, I really like that this saw is available for such a low price. I think at the price of £159.99, this is definitely an entry level saw that allows newcomers to woodworking to get their head around how a bandsaw works to potentially upgrade in the future. I really like the fact that it comes with a two year warranty, which gives you a peace of mind should anything go wrong. The included the accessories are a really nice touch as well. That push stick, miter gauge and fence are very much a nice to have and it's not something that you would expect to get from a tool at this price point. In terms of areas where I think this tool could be improved, well firstly I'm going to say the tensioner on the top of the saw, that could be a lot better. It does seem to me that you need to have that tensioner pretty much set to maximum in order to get the right tension on the blade that is needed. Secondly, I'm gonna say that the stock blade included could have been a lot better. It's very much something to get you going, but I think if you're someone that is planning on using this bandsaw on a weekly basis, you absolutely should consider upgrading that as soon as you possibly can. And lastly, the screw that controls the opening for the top and the bottom doors. For some reason, it is ridiculously long and it feels like you have to turn it about a hundred times before it actually unlocks. Titan, if you are listening, please reduce the size of that screw so you do not have to turn it as much to actually open it. Taking all of that into consideration now it is time for the question do i think that this bandsaw is worth the money i'm going to say if you're new to woodworking and this is your first bandsaw purchase then yes this is an absolutely great purchase that allows you to dip your toe into the world of bandsaws before upgrading in the future. If, however, you're someone that needs to use a bandsaw on a more frequent basis and you need a higher quality of cut, then you should be prepared to invest a little more in this bandsaw before it gives you the results that you would need. If you own this bandsaw and you've had better luck with different blades, then please let us know in the comments below. Do you think this is the best budget bandsaw? If you want to check out more reviews that I've done on the Titan range, then click here next. And until next time, happy building.